In this video, we will understand what agile frameworks are. We often get different answers when we ask the question, what is agile? Some of the typical answers are, it is a framework to manage projects. It is a project management methodology. It is a set of processes and tools and so on. Agile is essentially a philosophy based on a set of values and principles. It's a way of managing complex projects. In this video, we are not going to delve into understanding what Agile is. Rather, we'll understand what the Agile frameworks are. So, what is a framework? In general, a framework is a real or conceptual structure intended to serve as a support or guide for the building of something that expands the structure into something useful. In the context of software development, it provides a foundation on which software developers can build programs for a specific platform. For example, a framework may include predefined classes and functions that can be used to process input, manage hardware devices, and interact with the system software. And what is a methodology? As per dictionary, the meaning of methodology is a body of methods, rules, and postulates employed by a discipline, a particular procedure or set of procedures. So, Agile is neither a framework nor a methodology. Agile doesn't tell us how to manage projects or how to build software. Agile frameworks do that. These frameworks, guided by the umbrella concept of Agile, which is customer-focused, short iterations, faster feedback, responding to change, provide some guidelines, practices to manage complex projects. I have come across so many frameworks over a period of time. I want to talk about some of those, and I'm quite sure that's not all of them. Some of them might not exist anymore or might have been merged into other frameworks or being superseded by the other frameworks. So the first one which I've got is Extreme Programming or XP. And then we have XP Lite, which is a lighter version of Extreme Programming. We have Dynamic Systems Development Method, which is DSDM. We have Scrum, Crystal, Agile Modeling, Feature Driven Design, Lean Software Development, Adaptive Software Development, Rational Unified Process, Rapid Application Development, Evo, large scale Scrum, Scrum at scale, disciplined design delivery, and scaled design framework. Let's talk about some popular frameworks, some of the main frameworks you may hear about, and just explain an overview of what they mean and how they are different from each other. When it comes to framework, as I say, these are different frameworks out there, and they all fulfill slightly different roles. Some frameworks give you more process to follow, give you more things to do, more things when you can pick it up and say, we are running this framework. Now we are running this process and that will tell us what meetings to have, how often to have them, what roles to have within the team we are working with and so forth. So one of the most popular agile frameworks one of the best used frameworks and a framework that does this very well is a framework called Scrum. In Scrum, you have three roles. You have a Scrum master, you have a product owner and developers. It's based on empiricism, which means you learn from your experience. It has three pillars, inspection, adaption and transparency. And then you have a sprint, and then Sprint is a container for different ceremonies or events, which are daily scrum, sprint planning, sprint reviews, sprint retrospectives, and backlog refinement, which gives you product backlog and so forth. So scrum is a process that you could pick up as a framework and then say, we are running the sprints and we are conducting all these events, we have these different specialized roles and we are following Scrum Framework. 
One thing to be careful, although, is not to confuse Agile and Scrum. Scrum, as I say, is a way of being Agile. It's a way of doing Agile on a day-to-day basis. But it's not same as Agile. It's a kind of subset of Agile, just like any other frameworks are. There is another framework called DSDM, which is really interesting and actually has a lot more goals within it. It has a lot more meetings you can have. It has a lot more processes within it and is often used by organizations who are quite keen on process and quite risk averse and quite keen to make sure it feels like there's a lot of process going on. And it can be a fantastic framework in the mighty environment as well. The thing you get with the framework like Scrum and DSGM is that sometimes they are asylum practices on exact ways of doing things. And that's not a bad thing because a lot of it is about allowing the team to find out its own best ways of doing things, bringing in its own practices, inspecting and adapting over a period of time and being agile fundamentally and saying, well, that did not work. So we are trying different things. And if that different thing doesn't work, then we'll find another way that works for the team. And we will constantly evolve and adapt more than writing something on stone and then say, we must do exactly this way. But you do get some frameworks that give you practices like XP. Extreme programming is one of those frameworks where a lot of practices you have to follow. And most of these practices, uh, which are there in the extreme programming, are now used in Scrum. In things like uh, DSDM, you could even bring in Prince2, which is a traditional project management methodology. And then you have a thing that is not even a framework, but you might hear about that as an agile practice. It's quite popular and called Kanban. It comes from Japan. It comes from the Toyota production system. And it technically is not a framework. It's more way of working, a way of looking at the end-to-end process of how you are delivering work and constantly optimizing it, evolving it over rather than coming in and saying, there's a new process and a new way of working and then you should start following it. So in Kanban, you are trying to improve the flow. How do we visualize all the work? How do we minimize the amount of work that is in in progress? And then how we optimize delivery. But this is really fascinating stuff about Kanban. So yes, those are some of those different flavors of framework you get. Some give you processes. Some give you more practices than processes. Another thing you may come across nowadays is scaling agile and scaling agile frameworks. And this is a really nice problem for agile to have. If you think Agile hasn't been around necessarily that long, and the Agile manifesto was written only in 2001, when it first started out, it wasn't particularly widely used. And so you did not have the problem of scaling. You did not have a problem of how do we use Agile or an Agile framework across dozens of different teams, across the enterprise, across the user organization, and with involvement of thousands of people. But as Agile has become more successful, more popular, being more and more adapted, it runs into this problem of scaling. How do you use a framework across multiple teams? Scrum, for example, as a framework says, the team size should be typically 10 or fewer people, which means you can't have a Scrum team of 50 people or 100 people. You have to have multiple scrum teams. Then if you have multiple scrum teams, then how do you coordinate the work between these different teams? How will you manage the dependencies? How will you manage communication? And this is where you get what are called scaling agile frameworks. And they have evolved over the years, but become more and popular in the last five years or so. So the ones you probably come across are things like scaled agile frameworks, which still suggests practicing Scrum at the team level, applies extra element of process to them, extra roles at a scaled level, and then provides some more guidelines to manage 
a project at the enterprise level. There's another one called LESS, which is large scale scrum. And that basically is just scrum. It uses scrum, but has various ways of scaling it. Splits up the scrum meetings and has a lot more focus on things like complexity theory and system thinking. It focuses on academic areas that look at whole organization and the structure of the organizations and look to improve the structure of organization rather than just saying, this is a new process you follow that scales as I. As you scale, you kind of look at the entire organization and you look to transform the entire organization. There's also one called disciplined agile delivery or DAD, which brings in lots and lots of different parts of different frameworks. And it is goal oriented. So rather than saying this is the process you follow, it focuses more than what you're trying to achieve. And then when you find that thing you are trying to achieve, you pick the best way of achieving that thing from other different frameworks that is comprised of. So there are three different scaling frameworks, which are actually around uh, being used by different teams uh, across the world. And there are the other frameworks which we spoke about. So there are so many Agile frameworks, but the underlying philosophy of values and principles mentioned in the Agile Manifesto remain the same. Thank you. Thank you.